Hey, pick it up right where we left off. Got the new clutch pads in. Let's put them on. Before I tighten those down, I'm gonna watch a video and just make sure I did that properly. Cause there was weird, there was two of them that were like thinner and then these like really thin bands that go on. I just wanna make sure I put this on right. Alright, good thing I looked at the manual because apparently I did not do this correctly. There's some weird judder springs, whatever they're called, uh, that I put incorrectly in, so. So we finally got the new clutch pads in the engine, but yet the clutch still doesn't work. I push the clutch pedal in and nothing happens. If you actually look down in here, you can see uh, that there's a metal rod that goes into the engine. That's, get, that's, that's the metal rod that pushes and pushes in the clutch pads and allows those, uh, that thing to expand and all the plates to loosen up. If, if I push the clutch pedal in, and if I look at that metal rod, it moves like a tiny little bit, but not enough to actually get the thing to expand and all the, everything. So I think it's just, the, it's not the engine, I think it's just the setup I have. I think it's just this. If you actually look at it, it goes up, then it comes down, then it comes up, then it goes up again, comes down, goes up again, goes down a little, and then back up. I think that is trapping air bubbles in here that I'm not able to get bled out by bleeding the brakes, so I thought about trying to get them to actually work, but I already bought everything I need to uh, to replace this with steel brake lines, so let's just wait for that stuff to get here. It'll hopefully get here in a couple days. I'll replace this with steel brake line, and then hopefully that will get the clutch to actually work on this thing. All right, in the meantime, let's work on installing the headlights, taillights, and light bar while we're waiting for the brake line to get in. So these are just cheap pod lights I found on Amazon. This is actually, the light bar is actually off of the red two-speed go-kart. I didn't feel like buying a new light bar for this product, so I stole it off of an old project. Um, I'm gonna use these for the headlights. I bought these because I originally thought of trying to find like a red adhesive tape to put on these to make these like brake lights. But I can't find anything that'll work, so for the brake lights, I'm not really sure what we're gonna do. I also found a bunch of these. These are uh, these are really cheap red LED strips that have an adhesive back on them. These are kind of cool because you can contour them to the frame and make the brake lights look really cool. Well, uh, for the brake lights, I'm not really sure what we're gonna do. Uh, for the reverse lights, I'm either gonna use this. I, I do have two of these, or I'm gonna use these. Haven't really. I don't know. I haven't decided yet.
right, so let's take a little break from the headlights and taillights because the fittings that we were waiting for, for the clutch, finally got here in the mail. These are what we were waiting for. These things were hard to find and took a little while to ship. So I think we finally now have everything we need to fix the clutch. So I am pretty sure I'm not gonna have a video for this Sunday because today is Sunday and there's no way this video is ready But uh, I've I've been busy with Christmas. I'm sure you guys understand I've been busy with family and all that plus I've been kind of having a nightmare with this clutch trying to get it to work now when I first put the the steel brake line on and bled the system and all that it just was wasn't working it just felt like it just wasn't enough that it wasn't building pressure and it just felt like there just wasn't enough fluid movement to actually get the clutch to work. So what I did was I spent two and a half days uh, putting this double barrel master cylinder. I also put one for the front brakes, so the front brakes work a lot better. Basically, this double barrel master cylinder just runs to, both barrels run to one brake line. The two ports on the bottom, I just put a really short brake line on it and then just connect from one to the other. So one barrel feeds in the other and then it comes out into one brake line and it finally works. It's a little hard to push in, and there's a lot of play for some reason, but it, the clutch finally works. I, I took the clutch cover off and actually, you know, verified that it actually is, the clutch is expanding finally. So that only took me five days to get the clutch working. So now let's, let, let's finally test the clutch. I want to jack up the back tires so the tires can spin freely. And I want to test all the gears, test the transmission, and also test the clutch. As you can see, we've gotten a bit of snow.
doesn't want to stay in low range for some reason. Uh, it does fine in second and third, but it has a hard time going into into low range and staying in low range. So it's we definitely got to fix that. But uh, it works. It runs. Clutch finally works. It's kind of a hard kind of hard push in, but at least it works. So I think it's finally time to take it off the jack stands and see what this thing can do. Unfortunately, I have been banned um, from riding in my own yard, so we'll only be able to go back and forth in here. But to really test it, we definitely we got to take this thing somewhere else. Let's move this thing back in the shop. Neutral. crap it is this thing so cool so there's a couple of things I want to change already and a couple of things I got to get used to um, as far as the clutch and the brakes I'm probably gonna change the master cylinders to bigger master cylinders because it's a little weird having to push the clutch pedal in uh, all the way basically to get the clutch to disengage that was a little weird I'm uh, I think I just I, I think I'm just gonna put bigger master cylinders on here and hopefully that'll fix that problem and then the front brakes, same thing. It's a little weird having to push the pedal in all the way just to get the brakes to work. Um, so probably new master cylinders for the front brakes and the clutch. But we still need to hook up the rear brakes. Um, I do have a, ma a caliper on for the rear brakes, and I just haven't hooked it up yet. Uh, the shifting, it's that's a little need to get used to that. And uh, I did this a couple. I did this I think twice. I tried to I tried to push the brake pedal in, and I didn't put my foot far enough 
to the left, and I ended up hitting the gas and the brake at the same time, revving the engine when I'm trying to hit the brakes, so uh, i got to get used to that. Now, for those who are going to say, ah, oh, this thing looks terribly slow, I thought this was a CBR1000 engine, why is it so slow? I was only testing the transmission that I put on here, the motorcycle transmission, that, that entire test, I was in first gear on the motorcycle transmission. So that was, I was only testing high, medium, and low range on the transmission that I put on here. And I'll admit, holy crap, is this, does this thing crawl in low range first gear? It, I, I, I wish this thing was four wheel drive. I, I'm gonna be honest, I, I wish I figured out a way to make this thing four wheel drive, but there's, with the setup that I have, there's just, there's no way that I could do it. It's, it would just make this thing super complicated. Because it's chain drive, it would just add so many more, ch there's, there's no way I could do it. But if it was four wheel drive, this thing would be amazing. But, and then the, the couple times I did the burnouts, that was high, that was high range, first gear. So, remember, this thing has 18 gears. So there's a very big difference between low range, medium range, high range, and then also the six gears on the motorcycle transmission. Plus reverse. Reverse is pretty slow, but if I wanted to go faster in reverse, I could just go up a couple gears on the motorcycle transmission. This thing, this thing is so cool. So I was gonna end this video here, but then I remembered uh, we are in the middle of installing the light bar and headlights and taillights, so let's finish doing that. Let's put the let's finish putting the taillights on, reverse lights on, and then wire everything up to uh, to get them working. Okay, so I know this video has kind of been a little short. We didn't really do that much in this video. All we, all we really got done is we fixed the clutch, but that just took me that took me like over five days just getting that to work. And also we installed headlights and light bar, and it's kind of pretty much. I was planning on taking this thing to Lee's boss's property yesterday, and I was planning on doing that in this video and do a, doing a full true test to see what this thing can do, because I've been kind. Of, Banned is a strong word. I've been kindly asked by my parents to no longer ride in my yard anymore just because it tears up the grass and also certain neighbors, so can't do that anymore. So I have to take this thing somewhere to test it, to drive it. And uh, I was planning on doing that yesterday and I was having issues with the radiator and coolant system. Uh, I kept filling the radiator and the level would drop a little bit. I'd fill it up again, level would drop a little bit, fill it up, same thing. So I'm like, eh, it's a little weird, I gotta keep an eye on that. And then yesterday, when I was loading this thing up, I filled the radiator up again, and, you know, ran the engine, drove it out, almost ready to drive it onto the trailer, and, uh, before I got it on the trailer, I'm like, let me check the coolant again. I checked it, and the radiator was half empty. So I'm panicking, thinking, crap, do I have a bad gasket somewhere? Is the head gasket good? Uh, didn't end up going yesterday and ended up staying here doing a bunch of tests. I drained the oil. The oil was a little bit milky white, but I think it was just from the previous time it had water in it. Because I know you guys were saying it needs like a five or six flushes of oil to get that moisture out of there. And the oil, the oil didn't look like it had any fresh coolant in it. Also, I'm using red coolant and it didn't have a reddish tint to it, so I think it's... Also, uh, I was pressurizing the radiator. It was holding pre it would hold pressure for like 20 minutes. And uh, I kept filling it back up, and now it's finally starting. I think it was just air bubbles in the air in the coolant system, 
getting out, and once I ran it, it just got a bunch more air bubbles out, because so, now it's finally holding fluid. I ran it again yesterday for another five minutes, and uh, let's you know cool down for two minutes, check the radiator, it was same level. I did that three times, and it was coolant was still. So I think it was just false alarm, but a good thing because I you know was able to change the oil again because it was kind of milky white from the previous time I had uh, water in. I kind of want to do a couple more flushes. Unfortunately, that oil is not cheap. So hopefully soon we'll be able to get another opportunity and take this thing to that property and do a full true test to see what this thing can do. I also got to wire up the uh, the winch. That's another thing I gotta I gotta do. Now. Another thing is because it took it was it took me like over four and a half hours of research trying to find the brakes brake uh, brake line and brake fittings that work with the banjo style uh, master cylinders brake calipers and slave cylinders because it took me over four and a half hours to to find the those fittings I'll be putting links in the description below for the brake line the brake fittings also the tools I use just in case you guys want to use. Uh, this kind of brake line for your projects. It'll be a lot easier for you guys to find it than it was for me. Anyway, I gotta end this video here. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.